They tried to deny her equal representation, but she refused to be rejected. Her engagement in activism really began in her late 20s, actually, when an old friend of hers back in her hometown, Memphis, Tennessee, was lynched by a quote-unquote rival white business. The murder of business person Thomas Moss by a local white lynch mob set Terrell's life on a different path. This was really what began Terrell's engagement with anti-lynching campaigns specifically, but then she would transition into the suffrage movement as well. Driven, ambitious, visionary. Mary Church Terrell's legacy continues to inspire the next generation of voting activists. Terrell was a fierce advocate for racial equality, justice, and improving the lives of Black Americans. She saw voting rights as essential to her mission. She had a relationship with Alice Paul in the National Women's Party, and the National Women's Party were a more militant, more radical women's suffrage organization. And so Terrell saw opportunity there, and that's sort of why she, along with the National Association of Colored Women, the organization that she founded, they were at the front lines together. And so Terrell saw this as a big move in terms of bringing the two of them together. And she was always trying to facilitate that relationship with Alice Paul, just like Susan B. Anthony. However, when it really came down to including black women within the calls for suffrage, her calls were repeatedly turned down. A white woman has only one handicap to overcome. A great one, true, her sex. A colored woman faces two, her sex and her race. A colored man has only one, that of race. Colored women are the only group in this country who have two heavy handicaps to overcome. In 1913, there was a very large women's march around suffrage and gaining the right to vote. And so in Terrell's place within this, in the NACW's place within this march, was very much in question. And so at first, Alice Paul didn't want the organization to be there at all. And Terrell fought tooth and nail to show up there and to also fought tooth and nail to not be segregated within the march and to be on, on the front lines and to be a visible part of the movement because it was really important to her to not let these white suffragists forget about black women in their fight for the vote. Terrell and other black suffragists reportedly marched prominently in the parade anyway, ignoring those who wanted them to be relegated to the back of the procession. And she didn't stop there. She continued to try to bridge the gap between the white and black women's suffrage movements, like in 1921. At a convention of the National Women's Party, Terrell asked Alice Paul specifically if women of color, if black women, would be included. And Alice Paul said no. And this was a massive, massive disappointment um, to Terrell. And after, after hearing that no, Terrell went into a story about a pregnant woman who was lynched. In connecting the issue of women's autonomy and their body and their choices to the right to vote. And the reaction to some of the people in the crowd, people who were supposedly devoted to the suffrage movement and the advancement of all women. There were women in the audience that said, she must have done something. The pregnant woman must have done something to deserve it. This experience absolutely tore her apart to her core. But Terrell understood the importance of continuing the fight and helping to lift up her community she would go on to become one of the founding members of the NAACP. That was the whole point of all this, of all the bridge making, of all the intersectionality, is to not leave people behind. And that's the biggest lesson that I take from her whole story, is that when we engage in this work, we can't leave people behind. And so, lifting as we climb, onward and upward we go, struggling and striving and hoping that the buds and the blossoms of our desires will burst into glorious fruition ere long. With courage born of success achieved in the past, with a keen sense of the responsibility which we shall continue to assume, we look forward to a future large with promise and hope. Seeking no favors because of our color, nor patronage because of our needs, we knock at the bar of justice, asking an equal chance. Voting is important because it gives you the best opportunity to express 
what you want and for, for candidates and for elected officials to truly reflect the desires of the people. When we consider a lot of these candidates, especially on the local, on the local level and, and on the state level, and you're hearing these candidates say things and you're like, how the heck is this candidate doing all of these things, saying all of these things, being anti-gay marriage, being anti-abortion, um, being openly racist, and you're wondering how these candidates get into these positions, it's because people don't know about the offices and positions that they're running for, and then they're able to get into office while flying under the radar. We don't want any more candidates to fly under the radar. If you could, what would you say to Mary? I would say that I'm sorry. I think that I would say I'm sorry that things haven't changed as much as, as I want to, as many organizers want them to. I would say that I appreciated all the work that she's done. I appreciate the work that she did daily and the fact that she consistently tried to bridge build across a number of different racial and gendered lines, even if the effort wasn't reciprocated.